Have you ever wondered about our origins as a species? Where did we come from? And how did we evolve to become the modern humans we are today? Join me as we embark on a fascinating journey through the ages, exploring the complete timeline of human evolution. Get ready to unravel the mysteries of our past, gain a deeper understanding of our place in the natural world, and appreciate the remarkable journey that has led us to where we are today. But before we go any further, make sure you like this video and subscribe now, or this hairy centipede will crawl all over your face while you sleep tonight. Around six or by seven, eight million years ago, our earliest known human ancestors like Sahelanthropus chadensis and Ardipithecus ramidus exhibited a unique mixture of ape-like and human-like traits. While still heavily ape-like in appearance, their skeletal structures provide clear evidence that they had adopted bipedal locomotion, the ability to walk upright on two legs. The fossils of Sahelanthropus, discovered in Chad, take us back around 7 million years in time, while the remnants of Ardipithecus, unearthed in Ethiopia, bring us to roughly 5.5 to 5.8 million years ago. During this time, many paleoanthropologists, like Daniel Lieberman, suggest that a crucial change towards walking upright was probably influenced by significant climate changes sweeping across Africa. As the earth cooled, dense rainforests transformed into open dry woodlands across the continent. Walking on two legs would have been much more effective for these early human ancestors to move around, find food, and migrate in these new open environments, compared to the climbing and knuckle walking that other apes still used in disappearing forest areas. It might interest you to know that this improved energy efficiency from walking on two legs likely sparked other important evolutionary advantages in our early human ancestors. This includes the ability to cover longer distances, carry tools and resources, and develop larger, more energy-demanding brains. While these species still had many ape-like traits, the shift to upright walking was arguably the first major change that set our ancestors on a different path from other ape species. Before we continue, if you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. The first major milestone in our timeline is the emergence of the genus Australopithecus, which includes several species, such as Australopithecus afarensis, made famous by the fossil remains of Lucy. These early hominins exhibited a combination of ape-like and human-like traits, representing a crucial transitional stage in our evolution. But around 2.8 million years ago, a major evolutionary shift occurred with the appearance of the genus Homo. This new group emerged from earlier hominin species like Australopithecus. Around 1.98 million years ago in South Africa, fossils of an intriguing Australopithecine species called Australopithecus sediba were discovered. Several relatively complete skeletal remains showed a mix of traits, with its small brain and long arms resembling other Australopithecines but also exhibiting small molars, premolars, and facial features more similar to the homogenus. The discoverers assigned it to Australopithecus in 2010, but noted it may be more closely related to Homo than other Australopithecine species. However, some experts argue Australopithecus sediba lived too recently to be a likely direct ancestor of Homo. Another potential ancestral species to the Homo genus is Homo rudofensis, found at sites in eastern Africa dating back 1.8 to 1.9 million years ago. The key Homo rudofensis fossil, KNMER 1470, was initially classified as a large Homo habilis specimen upon its 1972 discovery, but further analysis in the 1980s and 90s revealed its larger brain size around 775 cubic cm, longer face, Bigger premolars and canines made it too distinct from Homo habilis. This led researchers to place it in the Homo genus based primarily on its large brain, exceeding the 600 cubic cm threshold often used to define our lineage. The genus Homo encompassed several well-known human species over the course of its existence. One of the earliest known species was Homo habilis. Homo habilis lived between approximately 2.8 and 1.5 million years ago in parts of eastern and southern Africa. Homo habilis, also known as Handy Man, was likely not the first early human species to stand on two legs and make primitive stone tools, but they also did. Their skeletal remains show adaptations for bipedal locomotion with a pelvis, leg, and foot bones, more similar to modern humans than to apes, indicating they walked upright. When Louis and Mary Leakey's team found the first fossils of Homo habilis in the 1960s, they faced a tough decision. Were these remains from Australopithecines, or were they the earliest members of our own group, Homo? 
Traditionally, deciding who belonged to our group depended on what made us uniquely human. The Leakies used a definition from 1955 that said to be in our group, you had to share certain traits with three other types of Homo, Homo sapiens, Homo erectus, and the Neanderthals. The Leakies decided that Homo habilis shared three important traits with other members of our genus, an upright posture, bipedalism, and the ability to make tools. However, in the years following Homo habilis's discovery, more fossils of human ancestors were found in Africa, and they also had these traits. These new finds were all of various Australopithecines, which were clearly not part of our genus. One of the most famous of these discoveries is Lucy, who had been mentioned earlier. She was found in Ethiopia in 1974, and surprisingly, she showed clear evidence of an upright posture. Additionally, fossilized footprints found in Tanzania, likely made by Australopithecus afarensis, showed that hominins were walking upright over a million years before Homo habilis existed. Because walking upright was not exclusive to our genus, scientists had to change how they defined our group. Instead of just physical traits, they started considering lifestyle adaptations as a way of defining who belonged in our group. Lifestyle adaptations are features linked to how a hominin lived its life, such as what it ate, how it moved, and where it lived. Some researchers proposed four lifestyle adaptations that might qualify a hominin for entry into the genus Homo. An adult brain size greater than 600 cubic centimeters, limb proportions similar to ours, the use of language, and the manufacture and use of stone tools. However, these criteria only partially applied to Homo habilis. For example, one of the most complete Homo habilis skulls had a brain size smaller than the proposed threshold. Additionally, a specimen of Australopithecus afarensis had limb proportions similar to those of early Homo members, but it lived much earlier than Homo habilis. The capability for language can only be inferred from the fossil record, and it's difficult to determine if Homo habilis or any ancestor millions of years ago was able to speak. The only criterion that was clearly met by Homo habilis was the manufacture and use of stone tools, although we now know that Australopithecines likely also made stone tools. Archaeological sites associated with Homo habilis have yielded primitive stone tools known as Oldowan tools, the earliest known stone tool technology. These tools included simple choppers, scrapers, and flakes likely used for butchering animals, cracking bones, and other tasks requiring agility. Making and using such stone tools would have been an important technological advancement for Homo habilis, requiring increased hand-eye coordination and manual dexterity compared to earlier hominins. Now we reach the first definite member of our group and one of the most successful and widespread, Homo erectus. It lived from 1.9 million to just 143,000 years ago. The first fossils of Homo erectus were found in 1891, and later some anthropologists divided this species into two groups, Homo erectus for the later African and Asian fossils, and Homo ergaster for the earlier African fossils. Homo erectus is considered a pivotal step in human evolution, as they were the first early humans to exhibit traits closer to modern humans, such as a larger brain size, increased height, and the ability to make more sophisticated tools. Experts widely agree that Homo erectus belongs to our group. These early humans had proportions similar to modern humans, and they were likely capable of long-distance running. They also had smaller molars and larger brains compared to their predecessors, making them more similar to us. Homo erectus is the first species found outside of Africa, with fossils discovered in China and Indonesia. They first appeared in the Republic of Georgia at a site called Damanaisi around 1.77 million years ago. What's interesting about this site is that there's a lot of variation among the specimens found there. Some individuals had the distinctive brow ridge of Homo erectus, but their brains were smaller than 600 cubic centimeters, the typical cutoff for being classified as Homo. Another significant species in human evolution was the Neanderthals. Homo neanderthalensis were a distinct species of human that emerged around 400,000 years ago and went extinct around 40,000 years ago, with their remains found in Europe and parts of Western Asia, indicating this was their geographic range. Neanderthals coexisted for a period with early modern humans, Homo sapiens, who had migrated out of Africa. Recent studies of ancient DNA from Neanderthal remains have revealed that Neanderthals interbred with the ancestors of modern non-African human populations. And as a result, many modern humans outside of Africa have a small percentage. 
around 1 to 4 percent of Neanderthal DNA incorporated into their genomes from this ancient interbreeding event. Our own species, Homo sapiens, emerged in Africa around 200,000 years ago based on fossil evidence from that time period, marking the beginning of the era of modern humans. While there is still some debate around the precise evolutionary path, the leading theory suggests that Homo sapiens descended from an earlier ancestral species known as Homo heidelbergensis. Fossil remains of Homo heidelbergensis date back between around 700,000 to 200,000 years ago, primarily in Africa. With their larger brain sizes compared to earlier Homo species, and evidence of behaviors like burying their dead and constructing primitive shelters, Homo heidelbergensis exhibited traits that foreshadowed the cognitive sophistication of modern humans. This ancestral human species may have been the starting point from which our modern Homo sapiens lineage diverged around 200,000 years ago in Africa. Homo sapiens were probably the first humans to develop complex language, art, and sophisticated tools, which allowed them to adapt and thrive in various environments across the globe. After a long period of coexistence with other human species like the Neanderthals, Homo sapiens eventually became the sole surviving species of the Homo genus. Our very own species decided it was time to sort greener pastures. So the global expansion of Homo sapiens out of Africa started 60,000, 70,000 years ago. After emerging in Africa, our species had remained confined there for a very long time. But then a small group of modern humans left the continent in what is called the out of Africa migration. This diaspora ultimately led to the spread of Homo sapiens across every continent of the world. But before the migration, a lot of events unfolded. About 30,000 years before the global migration, humans started farming and abandoned the hunter-gatherer lifestyle that our species had followed for millions of years of evolution. This shift to agriculture meant big changes in how humans lived. The cultural habits that developed after the rise of farming were often unhealthy for people and damaging to the natural world around them. It's unclear what long-term effects this dramatic lifestyle change will have on the future biological evolution of our species. For most of human existence, we were optimized by evolution for hunting and gathering. But with agriculture, we entered uncharted territory, settling down in one place and completely changing how we obtain food. While farming allowed human civilization to advance rapidly, it also introduced uncertainty about where our species is headed in terms of evolution, both biological and cultural. That wraps up our look at the origins of humanity, but the story is far from over. What mind-blowing discoveries about our evolutionary past await in the future? Join me again soon as we continue unraveling the mysteries of our species journey. Don't forget to like this video and leave a comment with your thoughts.